Mayweather turns southpaw for the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at Mayweather. He just comes at you from all angles, and down goes Gieber. The fight is over. His legs are still up there. Floyd Morgan. This is the beginning of the end. Well, you won't let him off. There he is. All over. The fight is over. Floyd Mayweather has McGregor on the ropes, literally and figuratively. How is the notorious left still standing? And that's it. He's one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters ever to step into the ring. And he right hand, and down goes Corrales one more time. The crown prince of a proud, decorated boxing family. Everything you fought me from day one. How old you remember? Everything working, baby. Everything working. Good. A prodigious talent, indelible character, and true visionary who reshaped boxing and the business of sports entertainment as we know it. This is the story behind Floyd Mayweather Jr. Floyd Joy Sinclair was born February 24, 1977 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, with boxing in his blood. His father, Floyd Mayweather Sr., whose surname, by the way, Jr. adopted as a boy, was himself a welterweight contender whose career peaked with a memorable bout against Sugar Ray Leonard in 1978. His uncles Roger and Jeff, meanwhile, were even more accomplished in the ring, the former becoming a two-division world champion in the 1980s and the latter winning the IBO Super Featherweight title in the mid-90s. And their collective influence on young Floyd was tremendous. Before little Floyd was even a year old, Big Floyd was teaching his infant son how to hold his hands in a boxing position. While most kids were learning to walk and talk, Floyd was learning how to throw punches, and the toddler soon became a fixture at the local boxing gym. At the age of seven, Mayweather was fitted for his first pair of boxing gloves. And it quickly became clear that he was a prodigy, blessed with tremendous quickness and punching accuracy and an uncanny ability to avoid getting hit. His defensive acumen in particular can be traced back to his father, who was also his first trainer. As Mayweather put it years later, the first thing my dad taught me, the less you get hit, the longer you last. Growing up, boxing also became something of an escape for the youngster, whose home life was far from idyllic. His mother struggled with addiction issues, and his father, whose career was derailed after getting shot in the leg in a family dispute in 1979, resorted to selling drugs to make ends meet. According to Mayweather, Big Floyd was often violent, giving him whippings all the time and ultimately laying the groundwork for their complex and wildly volatile relationship. Amid the constant tumult of his unstable home life, however, young Mayweather's dedication to boxing only intensified. As a teenager, Mayweather blossomed into one of American boxing's most promising amateurs, putting together a staggering 84-6 record and showcasing potential that exceeded that of his decorated uncles and less decorated father. Along the way, Mayweather also developed into a magnetic personality, a brash, trash-talking force who backed down from nobody. At the age of 16, Mayweather took home a National Golden Gloves Championship, a title he won again in each of the next two years. His success on the amateur circuit earned him the nickname Pretty Boy, a nod to the fact that his face was always intact after fights due to his ability to evade punches. This formative stage in Mayweather's development, however, unfolded without Big Floyd in his corner. Right around the time Little Floyd won his first Golden Gloves, Mayweather Sr. received a five-year prison sentence for drug trafficking, leaving his son to navigate a critical phase in his nascent career alone. And it was with his father behind bars that a teenage Mayweather headed to the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, where he was dealt his first and only major in-ring heartbreak. Despite clearly outdueling Bulgaria's Serafim Todorov in the featherweight semifinals, the judges handed the decision to Todorov, a controversial ruling that even surprised the referee, who mistakenly raised Mayweather's hand during the announcement. Floyd, it's uh, a, a tough decision from my vantage point. Let me get your comment on the on the scoring. Uh, I feel I'm winning the fight. Now, uh, when you look at Todorov, a three-time world champion, do you feel like he got some consideration from the judging? With that, Mayweather was done fighting amateurs. Later that year, the 19-year-old turned pro, but not before he found himself a new trainer, Uncle Roger, a development that kick-started decades of bad blood between Floyd Sr. and his brother. With Roger in his corner, though, Mayweather Jr. took the pro boxing world by storm. 
In his pro debut, Mayweather needed only two rounds to knock out Roberto Apodaca. You gotta look at some of the numbers in round number one. Mayweather, oh, oh, there goes, goes Apodaca. Apodaca. Making, making those numbers probably academic. And I do not think he's getting up, and he is not. This one has been stopped in round number two. Not two months later, he won again, defeating Reggie Sanders in a unanimous decision. Then he won again. And again. And again. And again. Seemingly, Pretty Boy, with his blazing speed, impregnable defense, and lightning fast hands, couldn't lose. Before long, Mayweather had positioned himself to be boxing's next megastar. As it happens, it was during the youngster's ascent that Floyd Sr. was released from prison, at which point he promptly took back over as his son's trainer, replacing Roger. And with his father back in his corner, less than two years removed from his pro debut, Mayweather landed his first career title fight, a bout against Gennaro Hernandez for the WBC Super Featherweight title. And in the biggest fight of his life to date, the electrifying up-and-comer pummeled the veteran, handing Hernandez just the second defeat of his career to send him into retirement. Mayweather, at the age of 21, was the champ, with a perfect 18-0 record as a professional to boot. Few fighters in the history of boxing had ever enjoyed such auspicious starts to their careers, and Mayweather's potential to be one of the greats was now abundantly clear. As his legendary promoter Bob Arum put it following Mayweather's victory over Hernandez, we believe in our heart of hearts that Floyd Mayweather is the successor in a line that starts with Ray Robinson, goes to Muhammad Ali, then Sugar Ray Leonard. Mayweather only validated that lofty praise in the months that followed, successfully defending his super lightweight belt time and time again. His efforts earned him the Ring's Fighter of the Year award for 1998, making him one of the youngest recipients ever. And neither the success nor the accolades were about to slow up. In 1999, the Ring named him the second best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, behind only Roy Jones Jr. But while Mayweather was climbing the proverbial ladder, tension was brewing between him and his father. In 2000, feeling that his father was putting too much pressure on him to be perfect, Mayweather fired Big Floyd as his manager. Then, to cap a highly public falling out, Mayweather also dismissed him as his trainer, eventually replacing him with his uncle Roger. Where is your relationship with your father, and, and why did you feel it was necessary to, to make a change? Well, I, I didn't feel it was necessary to make a change. Me and my daddy came to a, an agreement that he was going to go one way and I was going to go another. A lot of things got blew out of proportion, things that were said that wasn't really said. And I just feel more comfortable with my uncle. And my knockout ratio is much higher with my uncle, but like I said before, both of them are two, two of the best trainers in the world. If I go with my dad, I won't go wrong. If I go with my uncle, I won't go wrong. And, um, you know, with or without my dad, I'm still going to be a, a winner, still going to be a champion. After being let go, incidentally, Big Floyd went on to train Oscar De La Hoya, another one of boxing's megastars and a future Mayweather opponent. Still, the split from his father notwithstanding, Mayweather was unfazed in the ring. In 2001, Mayweather improved to 25-0 for his career with an unforgettable victory over the formerly undefeated Diego Corrales, knocking him down five times in a commanding performance and an eventual 10th round TKO. By 2002, Mayweather had moved up a weight class, and the success followed. In his first bout at lightweight, he won the WBC belt off Jose Luis Castillo, even though Castillo landed more punches and battered Mayweather like no opponent had before. The controversial ruling precipitated a rematch eight months later, but once again Mayweather prevailed, holding onto his belt via a second straight unanimous decision. From there, Mayweather moved up another weight class, and then another. And it was at Super Lightweight in 2005 that Mayweather made his first appearance on pay-per-view, winning the WBC belt off Arturo Gotti and cementing his pound-for-pound -pound supremacy. It was in the lead-up to this fight, though, that Mayweather started seriously leaning into his villain arc. Ahead of the bout, Mayweather talked endless trash about Gotti, calling him a C-plus fighter and a bum, and eventually crashing a Gotti press conference where he mocked the veteran for struggling to make weight. I'm a true champion. I'm willing to go to his turf in Atlantic City. I'm going to step on him. I'm going to crush him. Y'all can mark my words to this. I'm going to crush him. He's a C-plus fighter. I'm an A-plus fighter. Come Saturday night next week, all the fans tune in because I'm going to dominate. This guy is flat for these swing. While I'm not worried about who his trainer is because his trainer can't get in there and fight for him. The fans in Atlantic City can't get in there and fight for him. I'm ready mentally, physically. I want all the fans to tune in because I'm going to treat him like he's a C-plus fighter. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to dog this fighter. 
But as it turned out, that unrelenting antagonism was an effective marketing strategy. The fight generated 340,000 buys and $16.5 million in revenue on pay-per-view, numbers that no doubt inspired Mayweather to continue playing the villain. He was becoming one of the bigger draws in boxing, and within a year, Mayweather was back on pay-per-view, this time fighting for the IBF welterweight title against Zab Judah. It turned out to be one of the most memorable fights of his career, mostly because of the melee that went down in the middle of it. In the closing seconds of the 10th round, Judah hit Mayweather with a low blow, prompting Roger Mayweather to jump into the ring and go after him, setting off a full-on brawl. Eventually, after order was restored, Mayweather won by unanimous decision on a chaotic night that resulted in a $200,000 fine and one-year suspension for his uncle. It was at this point, though, that Mayweather, the undefeated Dynamo fully aware of his growing popularity, took the biggest leap of his career. For his first decade as a pro, Mayweather followed the traditional model that fighters had for decades. He partnered with a promotion company that staged the events and paid him cash up front for fighting. After 10 years at Bob Arum's top rank, however, Mayweather wanted out. He envisioned a different model, a model that afforded him more control and critically, more profit potential. So, following an acrimonious split from top rank, Mayweather, with the help of advisor Al Heyman, founded his own boxing promotion and proceeded to disrupt the entire industry. Rather than allow other promoters and networks to dictate where, when, and against whom he fought, all for a flat fee, Mayweather decided to stage and promote his fights himself, taking on more upfront risk in exchange for back-end profits. His fights, in other words, would be his events, which entitled him to all manners of revenue streams. And boy was he about to rake in a lot of revenue. Not long after founding Mayweather Promotions, Mayweather squared off in the fight that launched him to superstardom, a pay-per-view bout against an all-time legend and the WBC light middleweight champion who for years had been trained by none other than Mayweather's father, De La Hoya. Ahead of the fight, anticipation built for months, and the excitement was further ignited by a four-part HBO docuseries that chronicled each fighter's preparation for the bout. It was in this docuseries, moreover, that Mayweather pivoted from Floyd Pretty Boy Mayweather to Floyd Money Mayweather, showcasing the cash-obsessed persona that came to define him. That's like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, like 64,000. Floyd's bankroll is almost always on display, whether he's at home counting stacks by the thousands, on the road sifting through a pile of hundreds, or simply sitting for a television interview. Shit, I'm rich. I can carry all this money around. Shit, I ain't gotta carry no black card. I like carrying mine in cash. And when money and the golden boy finally squared off, the entire boxing world, and then some, was watching. The Mayweather De La Hoya fight was an unprecedented smash setting new records for gate revenue and pay-per-view buys, the latter resulting in $136 million in revenue. In the end, the bout went the distance, with Mayweather winning via a split decision and taking the WBC super weight crown from De La Hoya. He also took home a staggering $25 million for his efforts. But just as he was seemingly at the pinnacle of his career, making more money than he ever had and enjoying a level of celebrity that eludes most boxers, Mayweather decided to walk away. After hinting at the possibility of retirement following the De La Hoya bout, Mayweather fought just once more before calling it quits, announcing his retirement not long after defeating Ricky Hatton in December of 2007. With a perfect 39-0 record, countless accolades, and a strong claim to being the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer of his generation, Mayweather retired, citing his inability to take personal joy from boxing anymore. It didn't take, though. Less than a year later, Mayweather, who busied himself in the interim with a stint in the wrestling universe with WWE, returned to the boxing ring. The Mayweather who returned, however, was an even more calculating and brash one, fighting infrequently, choosing his opponents wisely, maximizing his potential payout, and taking precisely zero guff. We welcome into Sports Center the former number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, welcome back. We've missed you, Floyd. Hey, how you doing? I'm not no former number one pound for pound fighter. I'm, I'm just saying I'm the best fighter in, in the sport of boxing. No one has dethroned me, so how am I not pound for pound the best fighter in the world? You tell me. Because you retired? Uh, what the, but ha have I ever been beat? But what happens is you informed Ring Magazine well, you were retired again, already, as already, already champion. Forgot, I already forgot who I'm talking to. I'm, I'm talking to Brian Kinney, a guy who's <laughs> never laced up gloves a day in his life, who don't know nothing about boxing. Well, it's, it's good to have you back in, in top form already. Ultimately, though, Mayweather's second act was just as successful as the first, and even more lucrative. 
Mayweather earned roughly $10 million in his return to the ring, a unanimous decision victory over Juan Manuel Marquez. His next time out, eight months later, he took home more than $22 million after defeating Shane Mosley in a long-awaited showdown. And when he squared off with Victor Ortiz more than a year later and ultimately stripped him of his WBC welterweight title, Mayweather took home more than $25 million. That bout, incidentally, may best be remembered for the post-fight fireworks that took place between Mayweather and HBO commentator Larry Merchant. You were in charge of the fight. You were aggressive and trying and taking advantage of what you, know you what saw I'm, as You know what I'm going to do? Because you don't ever give me a fair shake. You know that? So I'm going to go and let you talk to Victor Ortiz, all right? I'm through. They put somebody else up and give me an interview. What talk are to you Victor talking Ortiz. about? What you, are you, you talking heard about? Him. You never give me a fair shake. HBO needs to fire you. You don't know shit about boxing. You ain't shit. You're, you're not shit. I wish I was 50 years younger you and I'd care. kick your ass. You won't do shit. Do. It was during this incredibly profitable second act, however, that Mayweather incurred the biggest stain on his legacy. In December of 2011, Mayweather was sentenced to 90 days in jail after pleading guilty to battery against his former girlfriend, Josie Harris, Mayweather's third documented instance of violence against women. Meanwhile, as Mayweather was navigating that ugly episode and its aftermath, his uncle's health was starting to fail him. Eventually, Roger became unable to continue training, at which point Mayweather Jr., now on the unenviable side of 35, reached out to the man who first taught him how to box, Big Floyd. And with his father back in tow after years of estrangement, the Mayweather gravy train kept on chugging. In fact, it was after his brief incarceration and his reunion with his father that he started making stupid money. For his pay-per-view super fight against the then up-and-coming Canelo Alvarez in 2013, Mayweather, who won via a majority decision, took home more than $41 million. And that doesn't even include his cut of the record-breaking pay-per-view revenue. Still, that was nothing compared to the payday that awaited him for his long-awaited showdown against eight-division world champ Manny Pacquiao, a fight that boxing fans had been waiting for for years, only to see one or both parties balk or stall. Finally though, after more than a half decade of will they won't they, the two veteran fighters, who were both past their primes but remained boxing royalty, agreed to square off in a pay-per-view match billed as the fight of the century. In reality, the fight itself left something to be desired, but it was nevertheless an unprecedented night for the sport. Mayweather Pacquiao shattered the pay-per-view records, generating 4.6 million buys and more than $410 million in revenue. And when it was all said and done, Mayweather's perfect record remained intact, he had solidified himself as the preeminent boxer of his era, and he walked away $240 million richer. That fight, needless to say, marked the climax of Mayweather's second act, which cemented him as one of boxing's all-time greats and made him one of the highest grossing athletes in the world. And after one more fight against Andre Berto, Mayweather announced his retirement for the second time. Again though, it didn't take. Almost two years after beating Berto, Mayweather came out of retirement again for an unprecedented fight with unprecedented earning potential. A showdown between him and two division MMA champion Conor McGregor, the UFC's undisputed biggest star. It was a blatant cash grab, pitting a 40 year old Mayweather against a mixed martial artist. Hell, it was even billed as the money fight, but it worked. No combat sports fan could resist tuning in to see these two decorated champions and larger than life personalities going at it. The 2017 showdown generated almost as many pay-per-view buys as Mayweather Pacquiao, and Mayweather himself pocketed $285 million with his 10th round TKO of McGregor. With that, Mayweather, at a perfect 50-0 with 15 major world championships, three BWAA Boxer of the Year awards, and more than a billion dollars in career earnings, retired for the third time. Although, more than a half decade later, Mayweather has yet to walk away from the ring for good. In the years that followed his third retirement, Mayweather staged several notable exhibition fights, including one against internet personality Logan Paul and another against John Gotti III. Today, even in his mid-40s and years removed from his last meaningful fight, Mayweather remains an immensely powerful force in the boxing world, a viable attraction and deaf businessman who seemingly turns everything he touches into gold. That continuing magnetism is a testament to his greatness, as a fighter, a promoter, and a disruptor. And while his legacy isn't without its warts, there's no question that few people have ever had as profound of an impact on boxing as Floyd Mayweather Jr. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.